morning family welcome to worship it's great to be with you today glad to have you with us wherever you're coming from i pray god's blessings on your day and god's blessing on your time with us at emmanuel and uh, god's blessing on your time with god this morning as we worship and praise god's name i want to welcome uh visitors who are with us today if if you're a first time visitor or you're coming back again for a second or third time, we're glad to have you with us. And uh, I'm recording this at the Waldorf uh, Pond, which is where we're worshiping live on Sunday mornings right now. And we'll be doing that through at least through August 16th, Sunday, August 16th. So if it works for you to come outside and join us, we'd love to have you at 915 live Sunday mornings here at the Waldorf Pond. Welcome to radio listeners this morning. We're happy that you're with us. Uh, our broadcast today is given in memory of our brother Harvey Johnson. It's good to think about Harvey this morning. And uh, thank you, Barb and family, for supporting our radio ministry and helping us uh, remember Harvey and his faithfulness throughout his life. A, a reminder that our uh, Thursday Bible women's Bible study has started up. They're meeting at the gazebo just uptown. Um, join them if you're able and uh, uh, willing to do that. It's a good Bible study. They look at the text for the coming week and uh, so it, it not only helps you in your study of God's Word, but it helps you in preparing for our worship together, whether you're with us live or online. As I said already, we will be worshiping here at the Waldorf Pond through August 16th and uh, we may go beyond that, but uh, currently that's as far out as we can go. Our, our task team is continues to meet our target date for moving inside is august sunday august 23rd and we're looking at uh, re-establishing some practices around holy communion at that time but again this is uh, all tentative and so we ask your prayers in that conversation and uh, uh, we just pray that god will not only lead us but lead all churches and lead uh, our our world through this coronavirus challenge and uh, uh, empower us to get back together and uh, and continue our online presence so that we can continue to bless this world with God's Word, a Word that is life-changing and life-giving. So thanks for your support in that ministry, and thanks for your prayers uh, always. Uh, there's an, uh, an announcement in your bulletin about our third quarter mission emphasis. It is our Bible camps, Riverside and Ingham Okaboji Lutheran Bible Camps. I just wanted to point out that they do have a uh, quilt auction coming up this uh, soon, July 3rd. 30th and uh, August 1st and our uh, due day ladies from Emmanuel have a quilt on each one of those auctions. You can go online and bid on those quilts. So it's a great way for us to support uh, our Bible camps uh, who are trying to be creative and inspirational throughout their, uh, their, their summer. And uh, so let's pray for them. Uh, let's, uh, let's raise money for them to support them so that they're here uh, beyond this summer, uh, next year and, and for generations to come. So thank you for your uh, blessings to our um, to our Bible camps. In our prayer list, we uh, we have a, a full updated list in, in your uh, on your announcement sheet, and you can go to emmanuelfamily.com and find that it's listed with our bulletin. Um, we are praying for the family of Tom Lilquist, whose funeral was at the church on. Um, Wednesday and uh, this past Wednesday so keep that family in your prayers. Uh, others on our prayer list are Heather Davidson, Jill uh, Lewis and Nedbed, uh, Ashley Rayhans, Tim Schmidt, Luann Van Gerpen, uh, the Evangelical Lutheran Church in the Magianus and our missionary uh, Karen Anderson. So please remember those folks in your prayers throughout uh, the week and uh, the coming coming weeks. With that, we now turn our hearts to worship. Enjoy for a moment God's sanctuary, outdoor sanctuary, uh, created not with human hands, but by the hands of God. And I'll invite you to just uh, take in the, the sounds of the water behind me and remember your baptism, giving God thanks for his grace and his mercy that gives us life through Jesus Christ.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. And let's take a moment of silence to give those things known and unknown to God this day. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance, and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others, as you have welcomed us. We sit in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us, and in your spirit, lead us, that we may live and serve you in the newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Jesus Christ, through whom we've obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our gathering song for today is For the Beauty of the Earth, hymn 879. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Beloved and sovereign God, through the death and resurrection of your Son, you bring us into your kingdom of justice and mercy. 
by your spirit, give us your wisdom that we may treasure the life that comes from Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. We continue with the reading of God's word. When asked by God, Solomon wanted God to give him wisdom, a discerning heart to rule justly. Reading from 1 Kings 3, 5 through 12. At Gideon, the Lord appeared to Solomon during the night in a dream, and God said, Ask for whatever you want me to give you. Solomon answered, You have shown great kindness to your servant, my father David, because he was faithful to you and righteous and upright in heart. You have continued this kindness to him and have given him a son to sit on his throne this very day. Now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David. But I am only a little child and do not know how to carry out my duties. Your servant is here among the people you have chosen, a great people, too numerous to count or number. So give your servant a discerning heart to govern your people and to distinguish between right and wrong. For who is able to govern this great people of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon had asked for this. So God said to him, Since you have asked for this, and not for long life or wealth for yourself, nor have asked for the death of your enemies, but for discernment in administering justice, I will do what you have asked. I will give you a wise and discerning heart, so that you will never, there will never be anyone like you, nor will there ever be. So ends the first reading. To me, the Bible is like medicine. It works only when I apply it to the affected areas. A reading from Psalm 119, 129 through 136. Your statutes are wonderful, therefore I obey them. The unfolding of your words gives light, it gives understanding to the simple. I open my mouth and pant, longing for your commands. Turn to me and have mercy on me as you always do to those who love your name. Direct my footsteps according to your word. Let no sin rule over me. Redeem me from the oppression of men that I may obey your precepts. Make your face shine upon your servant and teach me your decrees. Streams of tears flow from my eyes for your law is not obeyed. The word of the Lord. Our second reading. These words are from Paul. They contain one of the most comforting promises of all of Scripture. Reading from Romans 8, 26 through 39. In the same way the Scripture, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for the saints in accordance with God's will. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew he also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of his Son, that he might be firstborn among many brothers. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also among with him graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who is he that condemns? Christ Jesus who died. More than that, who was raised to life is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness 
or danger or sword, as it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 13th chapter, beginning with verse 31. Jesus put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all seeds, but when it is grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air can come and make nests in its branches. Then he told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and hid or mixed in, the, in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. Jesus told the crowds all these parables. Without a parable, he told them nothing. This was to fulfill what had been spoken by the prophets. I will open my mouth and speak in parables. I will proclaim what has been hidden from the foundation of the world. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field, which someone found and hid. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. Upon finding a pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought that pearl. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood these things? Jesus asked them. They said to him, yes. And he said to them, therefore, every teacher or scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like a master of a house who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Sisters, grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Have you understood all of these things? Jesus asked them. Yes, we have, they answered. We have to start today where we end with this last verse of the, of the gospel. Therefore, every teacher, Jesus says, who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like a master of the house who brings out of his treasury that which is new and that which is old. Beginning with Abraham and Moses, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the children of the tribes of of Jacob, God chose a particular people for a particular mission in a particular time in order that those children of God, those who had been chosen by God, might be a light, might be a beacon of hope. 
that will draw to God all the peoples, all the nations of the world. This was always God's plan, always God's plan to bring the world to God, to bring all of creation to God for renewal and blessing so that all would be one, so that all would be restored into one family, into the family of God. I've said this to you before, I'm quite sure, that the th my theme for uh, the commentary that I probably should write someday on Matthew's Gospel is this. Something old, something new, something borrowed, something true. Matthew understands that in Jesus, God is doing something new. Matthew understands this, and he's, he's more than happy to, to reassert this, that God is uh, in Jesus, he is forming a new family. It, it's no longer a particular people, but it's a priestly people of every nation and every tribe to, to give God glory and to work for the vision that God has for this world that God loves and that God wants to restore. God is up to something new in Jesus, but God is also up to, up to something old. God has been doing this since chapter 3 in Genesis when the world fell from, from, from uh, God's created goodness into sin. God did set them out of the garden and God set a barrier so they couldn't return, but God clothed them in their nakedness. God took away their shame and, and God, God protected them so that they might continue to move forward in life in order to flourish in order to be restored into that relationship that God so desperately wants and longs for. And so in Matthew's Gospel, Matthew is always proclaiming what God is doing in Jesus, but he's always connecting it uh, to Old Testament readings like Isaiah or the Psalms. And we have that again in our text before us this morning. <clears throat> Something old something new, something borrowed from, from Isaiah or the Psalms, and something true. God is trying to express to you and me these things that are hidden, from the, that have been hidden from the foundation of the earth. And that's why I included verses 34 and 35 in our text today. Verses that are uh, originally left out of this text. And in those verses, we're told that Jesus spoke to the people in parables in order to uh, reveal to them or to proclaim to them what has been hidden from the foundation of the world. And I believe that we are still seeking that which is hidden from the foundation of the world. Why does God keep it hidden? You know, that's one of the mysteries that I really can't answer. But on one level, I believe it's, it's connected to this idea of the rich man and Lazarus that we hear in the Gospels, that story of a rich man who died and went, went uh, to Hades, we're told, where, where uh, he was burning up uh, from the heat and his... He could not quench his thirst. And, and in the distance, across a great chasm, he sees Lazarus, a poor man, a man who was poor and begged throughout his life, sitting in the bosom of Abraham. And he asked God to, or he asked, uh, he asked the attendant of Hades to, to send, uh, to send for Lazarus so that he could dip his finger in the water and cool his tongue while he was tormented there in Hades. And the response to that, the response to that is that this chasm is fixed and it can't be changed. Then, then send someone from the dead. Send someone back to my brothers. I have a lot of brothers and they need to hear this. And the answer is, if, if they did not believe Moses and the prophets, then they're not going to believe even if someone rises from the dead and comes to tell them 
about these hidden things of salvation, these hidden things that reveal to us God's work of something old, something new, something borrowed, and something true. Jesus speaks in parable, in parable to reveal these things that have been hidden from the foundation of the world. So what are these things? What are these things that Jesus is trying to reveal in parable? Well, this first parable today is about a mustard seed, about, about a, a, the smallest of all seeds that when sown in a garden or in a field, it grows up to be the greatest of shrubs, and in fact, it becomes a tree. Something like some of the trees that uh, that surround me. Probably not. But trees that are big enough that, that birds can come and make their nest in them. First of all, we need to recognize that, that God is telling us, or Jesus is telling us through these parables, that the kingdom of God is in our midst. Every one of these parables talks about something that's here with us, something in our world, something common. And he uses that something common to tell us about something uh, hidden and extraordinary about God's kingdom and God's work. Well, in this parable of the mustard seed, Jesus is teaching us that God's kingdom is here. It's so close we can touch it. And because it's here, he's telling us that, that it is there in God's kingdom that we find a home. It's where we find our true home. The Apostle Paul talks about this in Philippians chapter 3, where he says our true home or our commonwealth, or there are some other translations, but ultimately what, ultimately what Paul means is our true home is in heaven. And it is from there, he says, that we await a Savior, a Savior to come, uh, to come again in fullness of His glory to make all things new, to separate, to drive out that which is uh, death-dealing, and to raise up that which is good and life-giving. So we can work and work and work to make our homes and our neighborhoods what we want them to be, but they are temporal, they are temporary. And Jesus is teaching us the hidden truth that God's kingdom is here so close we can touch it, and that's where we find our home. In God's word, among God's people, it's where we find our true home. When I was growing up, we I would play football on the on the lawn with my cousins, and my I was the bridge kid in my in my uh, cousins on my dad's family. I think there were 13, and I was the the right. Uh, there were six on either either side of me, and uh, so I got to play with the older kids, and I got to play with the younger kids. It was a pretty good place to be, uh, but my older cousin was a really good athlete, and he you know whenever we'd play football, you know if the if the ball would be thrown to me and I'd hit my hand or I'd reach out and touch it, he'd always say to me, you know what, if you can touch it, you can catch it. And that's kind of what Jesus is saying through all of these parables today. If you can touch it, you can catch it. Or if you can touch it, it will catch you. And it might be a little bit of bull. But in this first parable, Jesus teaches us that our true home is in heaven. Or is it not in heaven necessarily, but in relationship with God. Our true home is, is in relationship with God through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. In this second parable, uh, and again, these parables, can they have multiple layers, and so I'm, I'm only hitting one layer today. But in this second parable of the, of the yeast and the woman who, it's actually the, the Greek word is, is the same... Um, as the buried treasure, she hid the yeast in the in the flour until it was all leavened. Well, what is Jesus trying to teach us with this parable? Well, I think that he, what the secret that he's trying to reveal to us is that again, the kingdom is here. The kingdom is here through Jesus, and it's a kingdom that wants to help you rise. Isn't that what yeast does to dough? I used to love to watch my mom bake bread. She'd put that yeast in there and she'd she'd knead it around till again till it was all leavened and pretty soon she'd let it she'd let it sit and cover it maybe with a 
a, a cloth and pretty soon that thing was it was overflowing the bowl and she'd push it down again and she'd knead it some more and then cover it again and before long it was the the, the warmth would would bring it to life and it would rise what a great message that Jesus brings to us. That it's the kingdom of God. It's through God's word. Again, through God's word and our relationship with God's people. And, and our relationship with God through Jesus and the Spirit. It's through that, those relationships that we rise. Nothing in this world will help us rise in that same way. It may make us feel good. It may put us on a mountaintop experience. It might... You know, it might make us feel like we can conquer the world, you know. Again, it's temporary. It's not going to last. And it's only through the kingdom of God that is here with us in Jesus that we find a kingdom where the king and all of its powers wants to help us rise. Not only after we die, yes, after we die, that... That one, that power is there to help us rise, absolutely. But today, the world knocks us down. We seek justice and strive for truth. We, we, we seek to lift up the lowly and we get knocked down. And Jesus tells us that in the, already in the Sermon on the Mount. You're going to be persecuted for doing what's right. You're going to be persecuted for following me. He told us a few weeks ago that you're going to get scars and you'll get them from doing what's what's uh, wrong and you're going to get them from doing what's right and in love and in faithfulness. So you might as well get them by doing, being faithful. The world wants to knock us down, but Jesus and his kingdom, the, the kingdom of God wants to raise us up. And that's a hidden thing. It's a hidden thing that takes some discovering, that takes some mining to find and discover in our lives. And speaking of mining, we find in the next parable, we find one who comes across a hidden treasure, buries it in a field, and goes and sells all that he has because he sees that it's, it's hidden worth. Jesus is trying to teach us that the kingdom of God has a hidden worth. A hidden worth that we may not see, that we may not pay any attention to, that we may not, <coughs> we may not comprehend its value. And Jesus doesn't want us only to comprehend that value when it's too late. He wants us to comprehend it now while we have time to invest ourselves in it, while we have time to root ourselves in it and bear fruit for that kingdom where it's truly that thing that gives us life. The same is true with the pearl of great price. We have a merchant who is seeking it. He's been seeking and seeking and seeking and finally he finds a pearl of such great value that he goes and sells everything that he has to purchase that one pearl. It's captured his heart. That pearl has captured his heart. <coughs> and Jesus is telling us when we seek, when we seek his kingdom, it will capture our heart. Where your heart is, Jesus says, there your treasure will be also. We find the kingdom when we find that life-giving kingdom that that lasts Jesus says it will capture your heart throughout the Word of God we we hear of these hidden things hear of these hidden things in scripture and I want to share a few of those with you today. In Proverbs chapter 2 we hear these words. My child if you accept my words and treasure my commandments in your heart within you if you make your ear attentive to wisdom and incline your heart to understanding if you indeed cry out for insight and raise your voice for understanding. If you seek it like silver, again a temporal thing, if you seek it like silver, a worldly thing, something like that's going to perish, but something that people have sought for its wealth and its value, if you seek it like silver and search for it as for hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord 
and find the knowledge of God. Earlier in Matthew's Gospel, Jesus says to his listeners, Seek first the kingdom of God. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all that you need. All those things that you worry about, food and shelter and clothing, all of those things will be given to you as well. Why? Because your Father loves you. In another place in the Gospels, Jesus says, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. Jesus is re revealing to us the hidden things of the kingdom of his Father, the one who continues to work to redeem this world, to bring it into the things that are truly life-giving. And so we return to the parables of the day once again with this last parable that talks to us about the kingdom of God, heaven or the kingdom of God, that place where God reigns is like a net. <clears throat> Jesus says it's like a net that is thrown into the sea and it catches, it catches fish of every kind. And he tells us that when that net was full, it was drawn ashore and, and they sat down and they separated. They separated that which was good and life-giving from that which is evil and death-dealing. And that which is evil and death-dealing was, was destroyed in the furnace of fire. This is at least the third time now that Jesus is talking to us about the judgment that's coming. He's giving us a warning that, that if we only invest in life, if we only invest in this life if we only invest in the things of this world he said it's coming the fire is coming and it's going to be burned up if all you do if all i do is produce fruit of this life wealth and riches and comfort for myself he said it's all going to be burned up We see this in chapter 25 of Matthew's Gospel. The separation of the sheep and the goats. He says to the sheep, Well done. When I was hungry, you gave me food. When I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. When I was naked, you clothed me. When I was, when I was in prison, you visited me. And they said, When did we see you, Lord? And he said, Well, when you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers, you did it to me. And then we hear the goats. We hear what, what the Lord says to the, to the goats. When I was hungry, you gave me no food. When I was thirsty, you gave me no drink. When I, was in, uh, when I was naked, you didn't clothe me. When I was in prison, you didn't visit me. And they said, when did we see you? We couldn't see you, Jesus. And he said, when you did it, did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. many excuses don't we have we didn't see it we didn't know it we didn't understand it we didn't we couldn't comprehend its worth Jesus is telling us that excuses in the end aren't going to work he's calling us he's calling us to open our eyes he's calling us to look for the treasure he's calling us He's calling us to let the Spirit raise us up to new insights and new life and to new ways of being. To look beyond ourselves. To care about those who are hungry and thirsty, naked and in prison. To care about, to care about those who get walked on. To care about those whose lives don't matter. To care about hear about things that we typically just don't pay any attention to, our brothers and sisters who are in need. And I don't know that I don't know that Jesus is asking you or me to change to turn the world over, to change the world in ways that we can't. He's asking us to do what we can start small, to start in our neighborhood, to start, 
Start by being vulnerable. Start by listening. Start by opening our hearts. And as we do that, the, the Spirit will do the work. The Spirit will find us. The Spirit will transform us. Jesus, Jesus really is that hidden mystery. He really is God's hidden desire to bring you and I to life. And He wants to save us. He wants to save us from ourselves. He wants to save us from the world. He wants to save us for His kingdom. And He has done that. He has started that through His own death and resurrection. A death and resurrection that we are connected to in the waters of our baptism. A baptism that we're called to remember and to re-enter every day, to die to ourselves so that we might give ourselves to the Lord by giving ourselves to one another and to the world and to its redemption. There was a time and a place when Jesus called a single people, a particular people, in a particular time for a per particular mission. But now Jesus, through the Spirit, is calling everyone. People of every color and every tribe, of every nationality. That net is full. It's going to be full. And it's going to be diverse. And you might be surprised. You might be surprised where the good news comes from for, for you. And you might be surprised that you're, you are the good news for someone who doesn't look like you or isn't like you. Jesus is tearing down the borders and the boundaries and the barriers so that his word can continue to go out and bear fruit. Dear friends, be made new today, again, in the power of Jesus Christ through the forgiveness of your sins, so that so that today and tomorrow and every day is a new day and a new beginning for you and God's kingdom. A new day for you to blossom. A new day for you to bear fruit. A new day for you to bring joy, to bring hope, to bring life and blessing to the world around you. Amen.
Let's join together in the reading of the Apostles' Creed. I believe believe in God, God, the Father Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, Christ, God's God's only Son, our Lord, Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit, born of the Virgin Virgin Mary, Mary, suffered under Pontius Pontius Pilate, Pilate, was crucified, crucified, died, died, and was buried. He He descended descended to the dead. dead. On the the third third day, day, he rose again. again. He He ascended ascended into heaven. heaven. He He is seated seated at the right right hand of the Father. Father. And he he will come come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. I will end each petition with Lord in your mercy, and the invited response is, hear our prayer. Merciful God, your reign is revealed to us in common things, a mustard seed, a woman baking bread, a fishing net. Help your church witness to the surprising yet common ways you encounter to us in daily life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our our prayer. prayer. When your word is opened, it gives light and understanding. Increase our understanding and awe of your creation. Guide the work of scientists and researchers. Treasuring the earth, may we live as grateful and healing caretakers of our home. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, as our country continues to be divided over many issues, we pray for your hand to intervene and soften hearts and bring cool to high emotions. Show us how to respectfully disagree. Your people are turning the world you entrusted to us upside down. We are ruining the beauty you created. Show us the way, the way we should know but have fallen from. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. We pray for our men and women in service. We acknowledge the sacrifice of time, of family, and even of life. Our military serves our country, and law enforcement at every level is there to promote safety and peace. Embrace these people in service and keep them whole. Soothe their weary bodies and minds. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. Your spirit helps us in our weakness and intercedes for the saints according to your will. Help us when we do not know how to pray. Give comfort to the dying, refuge to the weary, justice to those who are oppressed, and healing to the sick. Lord, we lift those up to you that we know in our minds and hearts need you. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our our prayer. You show your steadfast love and direct us to ask of you what we need. Help this congregation ask boldly for what is most needed. Refresh us with new dreams of being your people in this place and time. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please take a moment and share that peace amongst yourselves in your homes And uh, think of those that you can't be with today because uh, you've chosen to do that in home, and we certainly respect that, and we just want to wish everybody peace and goodwill.
God of goodness and growth, all creation is yours, and your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. Water and word, wine and bread, these are signs of your abundant grace. Nourish us through these gifts, that we might proclaim your steadfast love in our communities and in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our strength and our song. Amen. Amen. The Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our sending song is I Love to Tell the Story, hymn 661. Receive this blessing. Neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor heights nor depths nor anything else in creation will be able to separate us from the love of Jesus Christ. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Go in peace. Show kindness. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. We hope you have a blessed week and we'll see you again soon.